So at the minute, shipping uh, is responsible for about 1 billion tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions every year. So to put that into context, that's about 3% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. Um, it's actually slightly more than aviation. The IMO, the International Maritime Organization, have set targets that by 2050, the um, shipping should reach um, net zero by or around 2050 is the, the wording of the target, um, which seems like a long way away, but actually if you build a ship today, you expect it to be in operation for 25, 30 years. Um, so actually the decisions that need to be made in order to achieve that target need to happen today. It's likely that the future of shipping will be made up of multi-fuels. Um, a big chunk of that is likely to be e-fuels. So these are e-fuels that are, are derived from green hydrogen. So that might be um, liquefied hydrogen, e-ammonia, e-methanol. Um, and the advantage of these e-fuels is that they're scalable. So we can always go out and build more solar panels, more wind turbines, more electrolyzers to make more of them. But that being said, biofuels will probably play a role in the future mix of shipping, um, particularly for the existing fleet. Um, but the caveat is that we don't know how much biofuels are going to cost. There's only so much you can produce and there might be demand from lots of other sectors, not, not just shipping as well. There's no perfect silver bullet solution. There's lots of different fuels and it really depends on the different chip types and operating models. All of them have their trade-offs. Um, so uh, I mentioned biofuels might be more expensive in the long term, but they're probably easier to implement in the short term. Um, hydrogen so has some challenges around how much of it you can store. Um, so it might be more short term, short distance ships for the short term. Um, ammonia, um, is quite a promising scalable fuel, but there's big concerns around maybe safety. Um, and then methanol uh, is again a, a, um, an e-fuel, scalable e-methanol, um, but how you produce it is a challenge. The existing fleet is, is a challenge. Um, the, the most natural, the easiest thing to do is to try and reduce the demand of these vessels. So trying to make them run more efficiently, perhaps installing um, sails or other energy saving technology to reduce that demand as much as possible. But really, if they're gonna get anywhere near zero emissions, then they, they do need to change that, that fuel. The message I'd send to ship owners is actually, don't hesitate and wait for one fuel type to win. There's gonna be lots of them available. Try and find the best one for you and go ahead and implement it. The exact route that shipping is going to take to reach net zero is is still a bit unclear but i do think that the the fog is slowly starting to lift but there there are cargo owners who are actually going out there and doing this on their own they're willing to go out and pay for zero emission shipping services directly to the ship owner once we started the change then actually economies of scale will get bigger and these fuels will gradually become more um, affordable in their own right anyway mm -hmm.